Hello everyone, welcome to Fur Clan Part 2. Today you'll see me draw all of Fur Clan's apprentices, queens, kits, and elders. We have quite a few to get through, so how about we just dive right in? First up is Emberpaw. I mentioned her briefly in the last video. She's Gorseheart's apprentice, as well as one of Red Whisker and Featherfur's kits. Since neither of her parents were too interested in uh, raising her, <laughs> she learned very quickly to be independent. That's mostly a good quality, but occasionally it gets her into trouble with her mentor. She views most instructions as optional and likes to wander off by herself. Sometimes she'll drag her friend Pheasant Paw along on these little adventures where they usually just poke around until they find something cool or gross or whatever, uh, but every once in a while they run into like a Meadow Clan Border Patrol or a rogue and Emberpaw either uh, taunts them or backs off, depending on how scary they look. Emberpaw is a long-haired, black and red, classic tortoiseshell tabby with copper eyes. I tried to make her fur shapes uh, swooshy, kind of like fire because it suits her name and personality, and I also tried to give her elements from both of her parents. Mostly she looks like Red Whisker, but she definitely has that feather fur swagger. Uh, I usually struggle a lot with the tortoise shells, but I think Emberpaw might be one of my favorite designs so far. I think she came out really well. The next apprentice in Fur Clan is Pheasant Paw. She's Mistletoe Whisker's only surviving kit born prematurely outside of the camp. Uh, she looks a little bit frail, but is surprisingly strong. Pheasant Paw is pretty quiet. She generally keeps to herself, but she is really good friends with Ember Paw and has always looked up to her, even though they're not that far apart age-wise. Her mentor is Moss Puddle, who's pretty new at being a mentor, but Pheasant Paw is usually patient while he fumbles his way through his lessons. Uh, sometimes she does get a bit bored, though. Pheasant Paw is described as a lilac mackerel tabby she-cat with sparse fur and amber eyes. I was so excited about the lilac thing. I think that's such a pretty fur color. She doesn't look too much like her mom, so I think she probably looks more like her dad who I obviously haven't designed. He's not part of this generator because he's like some mystery rogue. Maybe one day she'll come across this guy who just looks so much like her and be really sort of confused and shocked because uh, Pheasant Paw doesn't know that she's a half clan cat. So yeah, that could be interesting. Coot Paw is up next. He's been the medicine cat apprentice for a couple months. Uh, he's always really liked the idea of healing his clanmates, but Trotclaw was a little bit reluctant to take him on so soon after her junior medicine cat died, because uh, she felt like she was being pushed into training someone random very quickly, and because of that, Koopa tries to show off a bit and is always looking for opportunities to go the extra mile or find a way to do something in a more efficient way. Basically, he's positioning himself like, yes, I am a natural at this, I'm so good, look at all these things I'm coming up with. Um, so he's sometimes a little over-the-top confident, and his Aunt Dark Ear and his Grandma Crowstone are always hyping him up, uh, so that gives him a bit of his big head. And that can get him into a situation where he thinks something is the best idea ever, then he'll show Troutclaw, and she's like, 0% impressed. Uh, you know, it'll be impractical, or it just doesn't work. I think it really is great that Koopa is like this, though, because he's going to be the one to convince Stream Clan's Goosepaw to help out Troutclaw in exchange for the secret medicine cat lessons. Oh, that might be hard to tell apart Goosepaw and Kootpaw. Um, anyway, <laughs> I think that's an arrangement that sort of needs a charismatic, out-of-the-box thinker involved to, like, convince everyone that that's going to work out. Um, so Koopa 
is a short-haired black tom with amber eyes. He looks a lot like his dad, just less uh, svelte, you know, like more goofy. Um, I think he's going to be great at keeping his patients comfortable, and he probably has a great bedside manner. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, it's time for the queens. Our first queen is Pigeon Flight, and her three kittens, Leaf Kit, Cliff Kit, and Tangle Kit. Pigeon Flight is Ginger Star's mate. They've been in love since they were apprentices, and I think that's super cute. After she helped Red Whisker out with her kits, Emberpaw and Koopaw, Pigeon Flight was like, oh hey, I'm really good at this, and I like helping out other mamas like this. So she was toying with the idea of being a permanent nursery queen. Uh, then she had her litter, and she was like, oh yes, I absolutely love this. So that's really great for her, and I'm glad that she found her passion. Uh, so Pigeon Flight is a permanent nursery queen now. The Furclan Nursery is a pretty fun place to be at the moment. Pigeon Flight's best friend, Nightingale Leg, is the other queen, and they're having the best time hanging out together and uh, going through the, the stage of their life together as best friends. It's great. The three kittens don't quite have their personalities yet. They're at like that uh, just open their eyes stage, so they've still got that blue color because the real color hasn't come in yet. I mean, Ginger Star has what, green eyes? And Pigeon Flight has hazel eyes, so you know, it's gonna be sort of greenish color for all of them. Uh, so Leaf Kit is the runtiest and Cliff Kit is the biggest. I'm thinking Leaf Kit and Tangle Kit are boys and then Cliff Kit is a girl. So Pigeon Flight is a long-haired blue and cream mackerel tortoiseshell she-cat with hazel eyes, which is a very long way of saying dilute Torby. <laughs> Uh, I really leaned into making her super puffy like a pigeon. And then I made Leaf Kit ginger like his father, Cliff Kit is gray, and Tangle Kit is like a white with cream blotches. A very cute family. I can see why Ginger Star is obsessed with them. So next we have Nightingale Leg. Quite the name, right? <laughs> She's Gorse Heart's mate and Poppy Berry's sister. She is generally well liked by all her clanmates because she's just a very gentle and caring cat. Uh, this is going to be her first litter. Initially she was worried about going to the nursery because she likes to stay occupied, but luckily things worked out with Pigeon Flight being there because, uh, you know, her three kits are enough to keep Nightingale Leg far away from boredom. Uh, yeah, nothing too crazy going on with her, she's just a nice kitty. Nightingale Leg is a short-haired, chocolate and red spotted tortoiseshell with green eyes. She has a lot of similarities to Poppy Berry, but they still have their differences. I really love the green eyes on her. She's also got such a dependable face, and I think she's going to be a great mom. Okie dokie, now it's time for Fur Clan's elders. Our first old lady is Nettle Face. Her and her sister retired together quite a while ago. They spend most of their time gossiping about what the young cats are up to, and Trout Claw used to be the third wheel in their gossipy old lady gang. But, you know, now she's busy, so it's just the sisters. Uh, Nettle Face is usually pretty critical when they're talking about the young cats, uh, especially the apprentices but she does have a soft spot for her granddaughter, Pigeon Flight. Nettleface was quite the beauty in her day and had a lot of tomcats chasing after her. Uh, and she had quite a few litters, but unfortunately none of her kits managed to live as long as she did. Nettleface is described as a long-haired, blue and cream, mackerel, tortoiseshell tabby with gold eyes. It's funny, I almost forgot to add her stripes, and I keep doing that. Anyway, I like her shapes a lot. Uh, mean grannies are really fun to do. Not that she's like that mean, but you know, 
uh, critical grannies are fun. On to uh, the other gossipy elder, Pochard Fur, or Pockard. Uh, the British and American pronunciations are different, and I'm going with the American pronunciation because that's generally closer to my accent as a Canadian. Uh, so this is Nettleface's sister, who retired with her, and Pochard Fur loves chatting with her sister about everything going on in the clans. But I will say, this sister is a lot more positive when talking about the younger cats. Uh, when she was young, she was a little bit jealous of her sister, but eventually she realized that they're both special in their own way. Uh, and now her and her sister are basically inseparable. She is also the grandmother of Poppyberry, Nightingale Egg, and Red Whisker. So, Pochard fur is a blue and cream spotted tortoise shell tabby with long fur and yellow eyes. Pretty much the same as Nettleclaw, but I tried to make her look a little bit less glamorous and more approachable. The third elder is probably my favorite elder in Fur Clan, Crowstone. She's the mother of Feather Fur, Smoke Face, and Dark Ear. And she's the grandmother to Emberpaw and Cootpaw. She loves boasting about how well her family is doing, which might be a bit rude considering the other elders' kits are uh, dead, but Crowstone doesn't really pick up on that. She has a fun rivalry slash friendship with Goldenleg, the fourth elder. They were apprentices together, and Crowstone just enjoyed constantly trying to like one-up him uh, throughout their lives. <laughs> I imagine she kind of works like a like a Sailor Moon villain. Like she just shows up cackling and saying some like semi-rude nonsense, but not actually doing any like real damage. I do think she was an excellent fighter as a warrior, though. That's why she's got some cool scars. I will say though. When I decided to give her all the black cats as her kids, uh, it's just because I saw she was a black cat without realizing that black tabbies are actually brown tabbies, uh, so oops. But it's okay, they can look like whoever their dad is, because I didn't draw them a dad. <laughs> so Crowstone is a black mackerel tabby with long fur and gold eyes. Her body is shaped a lot like smoke face, but her personality is a lot more like dark ear and feather fur. Oh wow, okay. Last cat. This is Goldenleg. He's uh, Gingerstar's father and is actually the product of a cross-clan affair. For people with perfect memories, you might remember Russet Whisker from Meadow Clan. Uh, they were both born in Fur Clan. And then, you know, the dramatic secret was revealed, and ultimately Russet Whisker decided to switch clans. Uh, but Goldenleg decided to stay, so he is still here in Fur Clan. And he finds that he misses his sister uh, a lot these days, and wonders if they could have been close in old age, uh, just like Nettleface and Pochard Fur are. But he's really proud of his son Gingerstar, and is enjoying being a grandpa. He loudly supports any and all of Gingerstar's ambitions, so he is very pro for clan expansion. Goldenleg is described as a short-haired red mackerel pseudo-tabby tom with green eyes. I made him really similar to his sister. I want it to be very obvious that they're siblings, so like at a gathering maybe other cats can clearly tell like, hey, is that guy your brother? You know? Uh, and I love the possibilities for like never-ending awkwardness. <laughs> so there we have it! Fur Clan is done! Wow, <laughs> that means I only have one more clan to draw, uh, which is kind of crazy. I've gotten a couple questions about where I might go with these characters. I am pretty attached, so I'd like to do something. And since I work in games, I was thinking like a narrative game might be fun. Um, I do think if I keep going with it though, I'd want to like separate it from the Warriors IP, uh, just in case. But we'll see! I haven't even finished Light Clan yet, so <laughs> that wraps this up, and I hope you all really liked this video too. Uh, bye!